Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking a little bit more at Quarto, a publication system from Posit. And with this system, you can write books, blogs, web pages, anything like that. So uh, we're going to get started today with a little bit of a deeper dive into headers and then work our way through some additional content over some other videos. So the first thing we want to talk about are headers. So these are just simple text elements to break up your documents. And the way that you write them is with a pound sign or hashtag if you prefer and a space and then your text. So in this example, what you can see here is a header level one. This is the largest of the headers and underneath it, you can just see some simple text that I've written. We'll talk about that in a minute. Above this header, I actually left a comment. So in coding, you often have code that will run to do a job, but you also will have comments that uh, are really just for you or maybe someone else that will read the document. So if you need it for any reason, you can leave comments to yourself, maybe describing what it is you're writing about or something like that. But these will not show up in your final process document. So moving on to header level two, what's different from header level two versus header level one is the fact that there are two of these pound signs. Uh, that's really it. That's what makes it take on additional formatting and makes it typically a little bit smaller. And header level three is the same way. You just add one more pound sign and it continues for four, five, and then six. So we have six levels of headers built in. You can use them however you need to to make your document look the way you want it to. Under header level one, we have a few different styles of text formatting. We have italics, which is created using one asterisk on either side of the text. We have bold, which is created using two asterisks. asterisks. And uh, if you use three on each side, you get bold and italics. So again, these are really easy to make. You just have to type those symbols on either side of the text you want to format. Compared with something uh, like Word, you don't have to highlight the text and go to the menu and hit you know, format, bold, or anything like that. You just type these symbols. And then when you render the document, you'll see the result of that. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Some other text formatting you might need uh, are exponents or subscript. And under header level two, we can see that a superscript is uh, used for exponents and it's created using a caret symbol on either side. And then the tilde is used to separate uh, text that you would want subscripted, for example, in a chemical formula like H2O. When you want to create strike through, you can use two tilde symbols on either side of the text. If you would like to highlight certain text using verbatim formatting, uh, you can put a back tick around that text. That's useful for when you're writing about code and you want to highlight a variable or something like that, but it can be used for other purposes as well. What's nice about that format is that it's a monospace font and that can have some implications for alignment. With the default system that I'm using, that text will be rendered with sort of a pinkish purple color and that makes it stand out a little bit more as well. Under header level five, I have some additional text that we are converting into a link. And the way that you create a link where you want to see the link text or the URL, you would use these less than and greater than signs and wrap that text. If you want to create a link where you do not see the URL, you can use square brackets to put the text that you want to see and then the URL in parentheses right after that and we'll see how that's rendered. And then finally, under header level six, we have a, uh, a bit of text that is with purpose, it's code. It's specifically code in the R programming language. And what we can see here are three back ticks to start this section. We see R specified in curly brackets to indicate to the computer that this is the R language. And then we see three back ticks to close out that section. And you may notice that this entire section is highlighted in a very light gray color. So it stands out a bit while you're working on it. Inside of this, you can write R code. So in R, a comment is simply one of these pound signs, which is maybe a little confusing because that's 
what the headers use in Markdown. But um, inside of here, they just work like comments. And so you can see some of the comments that I've written to myself. It's helpful to create these comments when you create a variable or do some work so that you as a programmer know what it is that you're doing, especially later on because you tend to forget. So right here we have a, a text comment that says create a variable and give it a value. So we're writing the variable called variable underscore one and we use an equal sign and we give it the value three. We have a second variable and we give it a value of three. And then we can create a third variable called variable three and we set it equal to variable one plus variable two. Very simple. And to print the result, the R programming language is quite easy because the command is just print and then in parentheses you write the name of the variable whose value you want printed. And so when this is all compiled and run, you'll see some of the power of one of these Quarto documents because you can combine all of the text that we've written previously with the code that we've written in this section. So you may remember that if you turn on this render on save button here with the checkbox, you can do that and then click the save button and your code will render and turn into a web page, which I'll drag over here. And you can see the final render document with the title that we gave it. Header level one is again, the largest and most important header. And then you can see the other headers below get smaller. Header level two is interesting because it has a line underneath it. It's a format that you can change, but that one automatically has that uh, horizontal rule in there. And then you can see some of the text formatting that we did earlier, italics, bold and bold italics under level one. You can see the superscript and subscript here under two, strike through under three, the verbatim text highlighted in level four. Level five has some links and level six has the R code. Now in this particular case, we have chosen to leave it as the default, which shows the R code itself in the document. You can turn that off if you need to, but below that you can see the output, which is six. So that would be the result of adding three and three. And the first part of that may be a little confusing, but that's just some sort of internal uh, text output that tells you what line you're on. So this is how you can combine code with your Quarto document, but also some basics about how you can use headers and text formatting to get what you want. Stay tuned for more videos on Quarto basics. And as always, please like and subscribe to the channel and help keep things going. Thank you.